At Sankalp India Foundation, we believe that every child deserves more than just survival. They deserve a chance at a full and healthy life. That's what we work towards through our bone marrow transplant program. Under Sankalp's program for cure, we have two units. The BMT unit in Bangalore is a 21-bedded facility within the Bhagwan Mahavir Jain Hospital in Vasant Nagar, whereas the BMT unit in Ahmedabad is a 10-bedded facility in Health One Super Specialty Hospital, Shilaj. Most of our children come from our thalassemia management daycare centers. The families are screened and HLA typing is done to find a suitable donor among family members. Others come from our regular HLA typing camps held across districts with a high prevalence of thalassemia. Either way, when there is a match and a willing heart, we begin preparing them for the big journey, cure through bone marrow transplant. I work as a patient coordinator here. I'm the first point of uh, contact for these families. Me being a stranger, well, being welcomed in their lives, being a part of their extended family. And also these families have taught me the true meaning of love and determination. Their strength in this unimaginable journey that has so much of trauma, so much of hope, so much of fear, so much of joy. Their strength is commendable, it's very inspiring for me. I have learned a lot from these families, having the gratitude for the life that I have. Thalassemia isn't just about transfusions. Over time, iron builds up in the body, and too much iron can be dangerous for the organs. So before the transplant, we take one very important step, downstaging. Downstaging means getting the child's body strong enough for transplant. We give intensive chelation therapy to bring down iron levels. We treat any organ issues. We boost overall health. Why? Because a healthier body means a safer transplant and a stronger chance at success. When they're ready, the child is admitted to a BMT ward. This is where science, care and courage come together. The journey from diagnosis to cure for the family is a real uphill task. In most of the families that we are treating, the father is the only earning member. And most of them are below poverty line. It is so difficult for them to come all the way to unknown city, unknown language, unknown food, to spend about six, seven months with us here. That's one of the biggest challenges and tasks. If you see the setup that we are working at, the mothers wouldn't have even come out of their village so far. All that we assure the family is that as a team, we are with you. It might be really difficult. The times might get really tough, but we are with you. Let's break it down step by step. Counseling. The family members are counseled in detail about the BMT process. The risks and benefits are clearly explained. It's important to mention that the donor faces almost no risk in the process. Counseling is very important for the patient and the parents to understand the process of transplant. The risk benefits of the transplant in a particular condition like thalassemia, sickle cell anemia is being explained in detail. So first we try to understand the general condition and once they're taken up for transplant, we explain them the transplant process in three phases. That is pre-transplant, during the transplant and post-transplant complications. So pre-transplant is basically the conditioning regimen where we use different chemotherapy drugs. Post-transplant complications like infections, GVHD, a chronic GVHD that is also being covered during the counseling process. Counseling equips the parent and the patient for informed consent of the transplant. Evaluation and preparation. Doctors run full health checks. We educate families and insert a central line for treatments. Patients undergo thorough evaluation, including organ function tests, iron overload assessment, HLA matching with potential donors, screening for infections. The transplant physician carefully assesses the risks and benefits of transplantation based on the clinical condition of each individual patient. These are fully shared with the family so they can make an informed decision about going ahead with the transplant. Before transplant, Efforts are made to control iron overload and optimize organ health. Stem cell collection. It is an allogenic transplant. Stem cells are collected from a donor from bone marrow. The patient's own bone marrow cells are also collected and cryopreserved for six months. In case the donor cells are rejected, these stored cells can be reinfused. 
conditioning. The patient receives high dose chemotherapy to destroy the diseased marrow, suppress the immune system and create space for the incoming stem cells. We meet patients mostly at the beginning stage of the journey. Patients have so many confusions, especially if they come to us, they'll be like, can we eat this? Can we not eat this? Will my son fall sick? What is going to happen? We see a lot of patients with a lot of confusions, doubts. Some are in fear, will this even work? Are they taking the right decisions? Most of the times, we are counseling them that they have to be free of any doubts or fears. And if some questions which we cannot answer, we will direct them to the right person. That is a physician's most of the time. We kind of give our patients a happy environment, even if they are undergoing chemotherapy. We make sure that they go back with a smile. Sometimes they ask us, can we eat ice creams? We will say, yes, surely you can. Stem cell infusion. Then comes the magic moment. Healthy stem cells from the donor are infused into the patient through the central line. These new stem cells travel to the bone marrow and begin producing healthy red blood cells. So when I am doing a transplant for any child with hemoglobinopathies, apart from curing the disease, I also take into consideration the patient's safety and also quality of the life. That is very important. These children have heavily transfused and received a lot of medications. I individualize the treatment protocol to prevent the long-term complications like GVHD. I try to preserve the fertility as much as possible so that at the long term they can lead a good quality of life. Recovery and monitoring. Doctors and nurses monitor the child around the clock. They watch closely for any side effects, infections and for engraftment when the new cells begin to work, which usually happens two to three weeks after infusion. We usually don't go and talk to the patient because we have children who are below one and three years. So we go and talk to the parents and then we have a good time with the kid. We don't usually talk to them, but then we have a play time with them. That's how we have an emotional support for them. Post-transplant care. Once stable, the child and caregiver move into our Sankal child care home. Here, we provide close monitoring for infections and complications, medications to suppress the immune system and prevent graft versus host disease. Supportive care, including nutrition and psychological support. For the initial two to three months or longer as needed, the family stays in a clean healing space where regular checkups continue and recovery progresses. Once in a while, we also have voluntary events and activities that break the monotony to keep the children and their caregivers engaged. But it doesn't end there. After the transplant, the immune system takes time to rebuild. Our OPD team ensures regular checkups, a full vaccination cycle, and long-term support to keep the child healthy. Post-transplant, we have to do sampling. We divert the minds for all the patients. We don't let them to know that we are pricking. So we keep on talking with them that how was their day, are they going to school, are they playing. After that, we'll check their vitals. After getting a report, we'll send them to doctor for follow-up. I'm Dr. Geeta. I'm a pediatrician. I look after both pre- and post-transplant patients. And I see long-term follow-up is very important. It has dual benefit. There are small, small complications which can arise. We can catch them at the right time and help them with the treatment. And we'll also be learning more about the long-term problems of the patient. And the second thing for the patient, they don't feel being left out. We are helping them emotionally so that they get back to normal life. From downstaging to discharge and beyond, this is more than a medical procedure. It is a lifeline, a new beginning. Pediatrics is always a very special field because seeing children every day itself is a very positive energy. And when you see that you're giving a very secure future for them, not depending on transfusions and they can live their life free, that is one of the push which gives me every day to believe that, yes, I'm doing something right. At Sankal, Cure is not just a possibility, it's a path we make possible together. Over 800 children cured and counting. Against all odds, let's give life a better chance.